Katie here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here today to share with you my moussaka recipe. Now, moussaka is spelled two different ways because it depends on if it's Serbian moussaka or if it's Greek moussaka. So I'm spelling it the Serbian way because that's mostly what my recipe is based off of, but it has elements of the Greek moussaka. So it's basically a combination of the two. Now the one thing that mostly is going to differentiate the Serbian from the Greek is whether or not you use potatoes, which Serbian moussaka is often also called potato moussaka, or if you use eggplant. However, I've seen recipes where people have used both. What I'm doing is all based off of potatoes. Now, before I start on the recipe, I do want to reiterate that just like with pretty much all of my recipes, everything that I'm using in these is based off, in most cases, is based off of food storage. Meaning I do not have to go to the store to get these things because they're either something I've grown or something I've already stocked up on and keep on a regular basis in my food storage. So with the potatoes these are all our home homegrown potatoes and i like to my favorite to grow are the yellows and this one actually <laughs> this was one of my biggest for a yellow potato that's actually a pretty good size yellow potatoes don't normally get that big but every so often i'll get some like this and so when i go to make the moussaka i typically like to save my bigger potatoes for that so the first thing before you want to tackle the potatoes the first thing you want to do is get your filling made so i start off with one pound of ground beef that i pull out of my freezer this is actually ground beef that i used in this that we've had for probably about three years now i take a pound of that thaw it out obviously and then i'm going to brown it up i usually only brown it on the wood stove about maybe about halfway i get it mostly browned and depending on what you're using in that meat is it and the type of meat and how much fat it has in it is going to depend on how you want to brown it there's so many different ways there's not one right or wrong way now the meat we have is pretty lean and so there's not a whole lot of fat that comes out of it it's probably it's actually more liquid than fat and so you can leave that in there or you can strain it out depending on what you want to do so if you leave the fat and the and the juices the natural juices in there and then add your other ingredients you can simply saute your onions and your garlic in with the meat the rest of the way or even put it in there right from the start and let it all saute together that might sound strange to some people but uh that's a lot of times what i do instead of adding more fat back into the pan to saute the onions and whatever other vegetables i'm using it just makes sense to use the juices from the meat itself now in this case because of what i'm I, because i was using my fermented garlic and onions like you see here these are red onions that's why it's that color what i did then after i got the meat part partially brown you can see here that i use just i take a handful i take a pretty good amount of the garlic cloves now when it's fermented it's it's not as strong so i add even more when i'm using the fermented rather than really fresh garlic that still has that real strong pungent flavor and smell and however much you use is up to you but i you know i would say three five ten cloves of garlic depending on your taste depending on the type of garlic you're using and then for the onions i used approximately a half cup of the onion so that would be the same for your raw if you're using these things raw i would say the same for the onions again if you're using them completely raw i would say add them in and and just brown the hamburger and saute the vegetables all at the same time and because fermenting does soften them a little bit then that's why i added in later so then and then the other thing i did to this one is i added a handful of my dehydrated zucchini from my own garden now you can use fresh you can add any vegetables you want some other options would be some bell peppers carrots peas beans whatever you want i mean this is this is all about taking a traditional meal you don't have to keep it completely traditional to greek or serbian style you can make it all you and get as many 
other things added to it that you like. And to that meat and vegetable mixture, before I put it back on the heat and, and uh, cook it through a little bit more, I like to add about a splash of homemade wine. You know, that can be a tablespoon up to a quarter cup plus at least a teaspoon of cinnamon. So this is based off of minimum amounts. So a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Now, personally, I prefer more. I would put up to a tablespoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of the cloves and the nutmeg. So just kind of play with your amounts there, depending on how much flavor you like. We like lots of flavor and lots of spice. And these are the spices to me that make the moussaka unique from other types of casseroles. Now, not all moussakas, I don't think the Serbians typically use these spices in theirs, where gr the Greek do. And so that's where I'm taking these different elements. I really like these spices in it because it just gives it a unique flavor that sets it apart. Oh, and then uh, one half to one teaspoon of salt in that meat mixture. And then put that on your back on your stove, whether it doesn't matter if you're using an electric stove, and then just, just kind of brown it a little bit more, let it cook, soften up your vegetables, and, and rehydrate whatever dried vegetables you put in there. Now keep in mind, the more dried vegetables you use, like a lot of times I like to use dried onion and dried garlic as well, dried carrots and stuff like that, then I'm going to add more liquid. So I might put up to a half cup of the homemade wine in there and leave all of the juices from the meat so that it has plenty to saute those and soften those vegetables. Or you can also soak them in some water ahead of time to let them rehydrate some that way before you add them to the dish. So it's all up to you. I typically like to do it all together and that way also while the vegetables are rehydrating, they're taking on the flavor of whatever you're using, whether it be your homemade wine or the juices from the meat. And so that it just really gets that flavor in, into the vegetables as well. So then the next process would be to make the sauce that you're going to put on top. Now it has a name I'll put right here. And that sauce, is ba it can be made out of many different things as well. Some people use heavy cream. Some people use whole milk. Some people use a combination of milk with sour cream or yogurt. Now what I did this time around, I uh, think the first time I used fresh milk when I made it, and I don't use any sour cream or yogurt typically when I'm making these kind of things because Patrick isn't big into sour cream or yogurt. So I usually veer away from the, that kind of stuff in these recipes. So I stuck with the whole milk. And so what I did this time, so I could keep experimenting with the powders that I have, it, and I made sure I wrote all this down for you because I typically just throw this stuff together. So I made sure that I measured things out and then wrote it down so I could give you some good ratios. So what I did was I started off with a half cup of whole milk powder, whichever kind you use, but make sure it's whole milk, a quarter cup of the real butter powder, and then a quarter cup of heavy cream because I wanted to make it pretty rich. And then a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of flour, and you're going to mix that all together in the pan, and just a pinch or two of nutmeg, and if you want, you can add another splash of, of your homemade, or it doesn't have to be homemade wine. It can be just whatever white wine you have on hand, whatever wine you have on hand. Usually when I'm talking about a white sauce, I try to stick with a white wine because I don't want it to change the color. Flavor, yes, there's different flavors there. Flavor doesn't matter to me when you're cooking with this stuff. What I did was, was I used that mango pineapple uh, mead that I made that I didn't care for the flavor as much. So that's one I set aside for cooking. As I talked about in my uh, new part one to the winemaking series, if you're interested in that, I will link to the whole series down below with the new part one in there. And then to that, I added two cups of water. So basically I'm making two cups. Now, next time I do this, especially if you're using dehydrated vegetables, this is another place where you might want to even up that amount so you have maybe two and a half cups of the sauce to three cups tops. I wouldn't go more than that for the amount that we're using here. You also need a couple of whole eggs. Now, some recipes will use only the yolks. I never do that. Even when I'm making mayonnaise, I always use a whole egg. I don't like to mess with saving the yolks for this recipe and the whites for that recipe. I always just use the whole egg. So I use two whole eggs in this. And then I mix that all in there before I put it in the stove. So you take your whisk, mix it in really good, 
put it on your stove and heat it through and let it thicken up a little bit. You don't want it really thick. You just want it to get about halfway to that point of what you would think of uh, for a thick sauce or gravy. So once it gets to kind of that thin gravy thickness, take it off the heat. And then this is where you're gonna wanna start dealing with your potatoes. So take your potatoes and if you, you can leave them, the peels on if you like. We always peel our potatoes just because uh, Patrick doesn't like peels on his potatoes. It's just the way he is. So I always uh, peel the potatoes and then slice them rather thin. Then what you want to do is you want to take whatever pan you're using. I like to use the enameled pans that came with my solar oven because I like the size and shape of them, especially for something like this because the bottom of it's flat. Anything that has a lid for me is great because then I can just put the lid on and stick it in the fridge because I make it a whole casserole even there's only two of us and a lot of times I don't eat dinner. So a lot of times it's just Patrick. So we can eat on one of these casseroles for uh, several days. Uh, and by the way, this recipe will serve about four to six people. So you wanna oil the bottom of your pan. You can use butter. I've done the butter before. This time I used a little bit of avocado oil and I also made sure I spread that around on the sides. And then you're gonna put about two layers of the potato on the bottom of that pan. Then you're gonna take your meat mixture and put that over the top of those potatoes then put two more layers of potatoes on top of that. Or eggplant, if you choose to do the eggplant. Again, this is entirely up to you. That's what make these, that makes these recipes so great, is you can tailor them to make them so they don't have so much carbs in them or whatever. You can even leave out the cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves if you want. But again, I like to, this is what to me sets this apart from any of the other meals that I make. So then after you got your last layer of potatoes, what you're gonna do is take that sauce that you made, that white sauce, and you're gonna pour it over the top. You want, if, you want it to go to, to work down under that first layer of potatoes, down into the meat mixture, but you also wanna keep it so that it's, there's, it's kind of covering those potatoes on the top. You don't want the potatoes on top to be dry. So if it looks like once you've done that, you're not, it's not topping your potatoes and it's all sinking down to the bottom, I'd say make up a little bit more and then pour that in there. You just, you want the whole thing covered. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to bake it in your oven 350 for 30 to 45 minutes. You're wanting to make sure that those potatoes get cooked all the way through, and you're also wanting to make sure the top gets browned. Now, what I recommend is baking it for 45 minutes. Again, your, your oven temperatures are all gonna vary, I realize this, especially if you cut your potatoes a little on the thicker side, you're gonna wanna bake it the full 45 minutes at 350. If it hasn't browned on top by that point, then simply turn the heat up to about 400 and then watch it for the next five to 15 minutes. Keep your eye on it until that top gets brown because it, it, you know, it just adds a little more flavor and a little more color. And then, and there you go. And then let it sit for a few minutes. Once it's all done, that'll make it easier to serve. Now, <laughs> Typically when they go to serve it, it should stay kind of solid like lasagna, but I was anxious to get the pictures taken. So as soon as it was done, I went ahead and served it up into the bowl. So it kind of fell apart, but it doesn't matter. It still all tastes the same. There's two reasons why I'm working through these powders right now. And one, well, actually three reasons. One is so I can just get more experience of finding ways that I can use them where I can conserve the fresh milk since we don't get into town that much and that's where at Costco is where I like to buy the organic milk. We stock up and then freeze it and then use the powdered milks or the box milks for making gravies and sauces and different things like that. And I've been using the box milk, the Gosner, for making gravies for quite a while, but I'm trying to get myself more into using the powders now too. I'm trying to work with all these. And then one of the other reasons why is so that I can show you how these things can be used. And it's like I keep saying, start practicing with some of this stuff now so that you know how to use it and know if it's even worth continuing to stock up on those items. And remember, we, sh we should be working through our fo food storage as we keep stocking up. So you're rotating things, you're learning how to use it, and that way, you know, if you're only using food storage for a grid down situation, you're not doing it right. That might be an okay way to start, but you have to learn how to use these things. 
you don't want to stock up on 50 pounds of whole milk powder and find out you can't you have no idea how to use it when the time comes or if you even like it what if you find out you just really hate it and you can't find anything that you like it in so that's another reason why i'm doing this is so I can share these videos on how you can use these things. And what I have found so far, when it comes to making any kind of white sauce or white gravy, including uh, gravy for biscuits and gravy or meatballs and gravy or turkey gravy over rice and turkey a la king, I'm really liking uh, doing the blend of the powder. So the whole milk with the heavy cream and, the, and or the butter powder to give it more richness, depending on what I'm making. So anyway, there you go and if you don't have butter if you don't have the dairy powders then just use whatever fresh milk fresh butter fresh cream that you have on hand and that's typically how it's done you'd still cook it up the same way the difference is i'm just putting all of these dried ingredients in the pan with the water so as it's making the gravy it's also blending the dairy powders into the water to make the milk and you can check out many of my other recipe videos i have all kinds of simple easy recipes that are typically like i say most of them are based off of things i already have in food storage whether it be dehydrated home canned homegrown frozen whatever it is so i'll put a playlist down below actually the playlist i'll put is making the most of leftovers but i also have a playlist that's called uh simple frugal meals so you can check those out if you're just looking for some more recipes or how i use various food storage items things that i stock up on so i don't have to run to the store every time i get an idea to make moussaka or whatever it is or tamale pie for that matter all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless